Let's start in the NFC, and I'll let the cat out of the bag. We kind of just heard Christine Lisi talk about the big trade for Sam Darnold. You really believe that Carolina is the team that's on the cusp, your biggest surprise team in the NFC. Yeah, when you look at the NFC, though, as a whole, you can go, you can start out West. There's no surprise team in the West. They're all good, right? I mean, Arizona is trending upward, so it's that's not a surprise. And then you 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 look at where the South is. I mean, Atlanta's Atlanta. You know, we don't know what's going to happen with Jameis in New Orleans. We already saw Tampa Bay win the Super Bowl. Uh, and, and so when you look at what happened in the East, it's like, okay, what's the, what's the surprise over there? All of a sudden, Washington emerges and goes to the Super Bowl? That's not a surprise. They were a playoff-type team, even though they, you know, they backdoored into right. it. Division so, champions. Division champions, but it was like a fake division at that time. So when you look at Carolina and the moves that they made <laughs> – with bringing over Sam Darnold and giving up the capital in the draft to get a guy that they felt could get them over the, the top with a healthy Christian McCaffrey, DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson. They draft someone at eight that helps them on the offensive side of the ball. They still got a guy like Shaq Thompson leading the defense. So when you start to look at what Joe Brady can do from an offensive standpoint and you look at that division, you say to yourself, okay, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers won the Super Bowl. But they, everything fell right for them. They called a New Orleans team that was banged up. They went in, and Green Bay was Green Bay. They didn't finish the deal. They hit when they were supposed to hit, although they struggled along the way. There's no Drew Brees. We don't know what Jameis Winston, if it's Jameis Winston. What if it? he starts off and he struggles, and then all of a sudden Sean Payton is forced to go to Taysom Hill? And that starts to, you know, and then now I got this quarterback back and forth, what I do week to week. Then you look at the Atlanta Falcons and you go, well, I mean, they got a new head coach. They don't know what they're going to do at four. What other playmakers do they have? Do Julio Jones stay healthy? Is Calvin Ridley going to continue to play well? What does the running back look like? I mean, it's all those things. So you look at Carolina and you go, okay. I, I think this is the surprise team. So, Cause, yeah. Because when you think about it, Chicago's not a surprise team. Minnesota wouldn't be a surprise team. It would be the Carolina Panthers. Indeed. So who's your surprise team? 888-ESPN, 888-729-3776. You can give it via each conference. Key's obviously choosing the Panthers here in the NFC. Key's choice on the AFC here in a second. We'll get to Mike's picks too. But again, 888-ESPN, 888-729-3776. Your choice for surprise team in both conferences this year. If it's the Panthers in the NFC, who is it for you in the AFC? Well, as I look at the AFC, it's the Kansas City Chiefs, right? They're, they're, you put them over there separate, and now you start to break down that conference. And, and based on the moves that's being made, it could be the New England Patriots, but I've always felt like New England just needed to retool, take a breath, get some players back. So they're not going to be a surprise to me. A surprise team, the Indianapolis Colts. They went out and they acquired Carson Wentz because Carson Wentz had success under Frank Wright. I don't give a damn what nobody say. The man has success with Frank Reich. Frank Reich obviously knows his strengths and his weaknesses. He now takes over a team that was, you know, a few plays of, uh, I would call it, upsetting Buffalo in Buffalo. If Had they just hit a few throws here and there, it would have been a different ball game. And so when you look at it, they bring a guy in that now has a different confidence level. Jonathan Taylor's the running back. They re-signed T.Y. Hilton. Michael Pittman Jr. is over there. The defense is what it is. It's solid and sound. The offensive line is great. So you're like, okay, everything is aligned perfect for him. It shouldn't be any turbulence at all. This is in Philadelphia where he was walking on eggshells. Well, if I do this wrong, I'm going to get pulled. If I do that wrong, I'm going to get pulled. They gave me a bunch of money. The expectations is big. Oh, well, my receiver's not playing this week. Oh, well, my other receiver's not playing this week. So he went through a lot. I think Indy, in the, within that division, because we don't know what Houston, that, that Houston thing's a mess. Right. Right? I'm not bullish on Tennessee. Uh, Tanny Hill is okay, serviceable. They got a nice running game. Their defense is atrocious from front to back. They're, they're not very good. And so when you start to look at it, and Jack, I don't even need to mention Jacksonville. Right. I mean, that's a, that's a basic new team with a new head coach and a new quarterback. 
So this is the team that comes out of that division, and they would be the surprise team for me. Okay, Mike, so we got Carolina in the NFC for key, Indianapolis in the AFC. You're going to go mega star wattage power with your two franchises. Go ahead. In the AFC, NFC, your surprise teams. Well, if I could count New England as a surprise team, I kind of agree with Key, which is it's hard to say that they're a surprise team, but obviously they fell short last year. I think Cam Newton's going to play a lot better, and I think Dante Hightower coming back is going to be a big, big difference for them. So in addition to everything else they did in the offseason from Matt Judon, the receivers, the tight ends, I think New England has a real chance to win the division, in my opinion. As Key mentioned, that they were closer last year than people thought. In that Buffalo game, if they didn't fumble, they probably would have beat Buffalo in Buffalo. So I love New England on that side. Um, and then on the NFC, Zubin, maybe this is a surprise, maybe it's not. But one of my favorite players in, in all of the NFL is Dak Prescott. And I think Dallas next year, getting Dak back, uh, people are going to have trouble keeping up with them. You know, Kansas City, as Key mentioned, you could put them on one level. But you talk about Green Bay, Tampa Bay, I think Dallas, to me, they could score as many points as, as those other teams. I think it's critical that they address defense in the draft, specifically either a pass rusher or a corner. I think the draft sets up perfectly. Someone like Patrick Sertan from the University of Alabama, they drafted Trevon Diggs a year ago. He's a good outside corner. But if they can at least get the defense to average, I think Dallas is a team that's going to score a ton of points next year if Dak can stay healthy, and I think they're going to surprise a ton of teams.